Hello everyone, my name is Alberto and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I wanted to make an overshirt. I did make a shirt video, actually a couple, in the past, uh, but I found this nice wool, um, super nice, made in Italy, it's like for suits, um, technically. But I bought it a long time ago and my idea the whole time was to make uh, an overshirt. So I took out my original shirt pattern, uh, which I'm modifying a little bit right on the fabric because this is for a sort of dress shirt, classic shirt, and I wanted to make it into a looser, sort of baggier shirt to wear, again, over something else. So I'm making it with uh, straight sides and I'm making it longer because it was sort of tapered a little bit. Uh, I'm also correcting the shoulders a little bit and the armhole. I am not going to match the fabric. Normally when you have checks or squares or tartan, you try to match the fabric. I'm not. Um, I just, as you can see, I just cut pieces. Uh, I cut my collar, did one side with interfacing one without. I also cut the band, same thing. This I made the exact same way as the other shirt, so I sort of quickly went through it. If you're interested, I'm gonna post the link to the other video where I explain everything more in detail, but the big modification is on the sleeve. I did make the sleeve a lot wider. You can see this cut here, which is for the placket. I cut the placket, which is this one. Uh, it's going to be asymmetric. The sleeve is wider, so it's going to have a lot of pleats and sort of a different fullness, more of a vintagey vibe. I quickly edged the side of the sleeve cut, let's say, and on the other one, I'm going to place the placket. And I'm just gonna place it on the wrong side of the fabric and then turn it to the right side of the fabric and sort of stitch it down. And this is gonna give me a very clean look. If you're interested, I can do a more detailed tutorial here. I just wanted to do a sort of overlook of the whole process. So this will give me a super clean finished look. Uh, as I said before, in this case, the placket is asymmetrical. Normally, it's called a house in Italy because it looks the top looks like a little house. But I just went with sort of what felt right for this shirt and just quickly drafted one. And the placket main purpose is decorative unless you put extra buttons in there like for dress shirts, but we're not doing it in this case. Um, so it's just an opening to ease um, putting, obviously, your hand through the sleeve. And after that is in place, we're gonna move on to the cuff, which I quickly drafted as well. I'm gonna use that as a measure for the final width of the sleeve. Uh, so this is gonna help me to set all my different pleats to get to the size I want. Normally pleats on a short sleeve are a couple, sometimes three, they're very close together, very small, and they're close to the placket. And this is just sort of a classic rule. Uh, in this case, I put them all over the sleeve, all going in the same direction. I also added one on the smaller side of the sleeve where usually there's no pleats. Uh, and I'm just pinning them down, playing with the fabric, just sort of figuring out where to place them. And once I was happy with it, uh, I just sew them down quickly to keep them in place. And then this will allow us to move on to attaching the cuff to the sleeve. The cuff is sewn in the exact same way as the collar before so fold down one side the other is clean 
Once that was prepared, I also attached the yoke to the back, which has one big fold. And the yoke is sandwiched in the same exact way as I did on the other shirt. And again, one side has uh, adhesive on it, the other one doesn't. So the external one has adhesive, so it gives it a bit more strength and shape. And the front is going to attach to this in the same exact way. Here, uh, you can see in the front the little modification I did to the shoulder and the sides. So while cutting the front, I also placed a small strip about six centimeters wide, two thirds of the placket of uh, adhesive again, and this is going to give the placket some more uh, body and rigidity. Um, and this is just fused on with the iron. Uh, you can see here how that looks. And the placket, once that is done, is going to be pressed, uh, folded two times, and then stitched in place. You can see the yellow text that is the salvage of the fabric. Normally, for a customer, I would cut that off um, because it's just information. It's not really supposed to be in the garment. But I kind of like it. I did leave it in and it sort of peeks out in some places. I do think it's a nice, cute detail. So I left it in and it also helps me waste less fabric. Here you can see the placket once it's been ironed and folded in place. And once that's done, it is stitched down on the edge and the bottom of the hem is folded so the edge of the placket will block it in place, sort of starting the hem, which is going to help us a lot in the end to get a cleaner look. And then the front is attached to the back yoke in the exact same way, sandwiched together between the two layers. And from there, we move on to attaching the sleeve and closing the side seam. Normally, this would be a French seam, but this wool is very bouncy uh, so I thought it would look bad and be sort of bulky so I decided to go first with a super normal straight seam at about one centimeter and then to overlock the whole thing to avoid fraying and then edge stitch it down so from the outside it would actually look like a French seam. This is a very easy and simple finish that you can do to a lot of things. If you want to do the sort of more bougie way, you could do the same uh, seam, but instead of overlocking, you could use a border or a bias tape that would look a lot better, a lot more high end. But in this case, I wanted something very simple, slightly sporty um, and also very easy and lightweight. This is quick to do. It lasts very well. It washes very well. You can sort of customize it. Normally you would match the overlock thread. Obviously I didn't, but I encourage you to do that. Or you could even do something contrasty so it gives it a bit more design and a bit more an interesting point. Um, but yeah, it's it's very simple and useful. It's a great finishing for knits as well. If you do uh, hoodies, it's great. And moving on, then we will attach the collar. As I previously said in the other shirt video, um, I do like to fold down while I'm preparing the pieces one of the um, neckbands, uh, seam allowance, this allows us to attach it a lot easier. And I do the same exact thing on the cuffs. What I like to do personally is to stitch the clean free edge on the inside, That tur then I'm gonna turn it inside out and stitch, edge stitch the folded bit so I get a nice clean edge. This takes uh, just a little practice, but it's very, very simple because uh, this way allows you to put all the extra sort of unevenness or pleats if you have them um, and sandwich them easier inside um, 
the the fabric which otherwise you would have to sort of fold once you're doing it it's very simple again um little note on the cuff i did make these sort of angled edges cuffs can have straight edges can have rounded edges this is just purely up to you uh, if you are making sort of a more formal shirt, there are a couple rules. Um, but in this case, we're just sort of playing around with shapes and what we like more. Um, here you can actually see once the cuff is attached to one side how it looks. So I attached the free edge and now I'll have to fold it inside to enclose all the raw edges and finish it nicely. So once I folded everything in, I'm just gonna top stitch on the edge and then I'm gonna stitch all around with a decorative stitch. I do an edge stitch and then one about uh, 0.5 centimeters inside. But again, that's sort of up to you. Uh, so once that's done, I do the same for the collar and this is the final result. So collar is attached, calves are attached, everything has been hemmed with a simple rolled hem. You can see how everything looks nice, clean. So we'll just have to add buttons and this is the final result. I hope you liked it and it was interesting for you. If you have any requests for videos or questions, please leave them in the comments. Uh, like and subscribe, it's a great help for me if you're not already. Put the notification bell on so you get notified for my future videos. And I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.